you know, Never Have I Ever is a global success. It's a global rage. Uh, people have applauded it uh, for, for, in a sense, going beyond the stereotype. And I think one sentence that you said in an interview really stayed with me, that it's not that stereotypes are false, it's that stereotypes are incomplete. And that's the problem with stereotypes. Purna, you know, you have, you're a deeply fiercely political person. Representation matters to you. And when I heard Anjula say, you know, I couldn't get roles for somebody who looked like me, you probably had to battle that pretty much through your career, maybe up until now. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we're seeing now is a very particular, again, Angela and I were just talking about this. We, it's a very particular time in history where all of a sudden it seems like all of us are so visible and our careers are, you know, just catapulting forward. But, you know, the seeds of this movement that you're seeing today and not, not even three years ago, like right now, the seeds of this movement were planted many, many years ago. So the, uh, you know, I think Mindy Kaling, Ava DuVernay, Shonda Rhimes, um, Oprah, all these women of color creating this movement for women of color. We are really stepping into this particular time. So I am a recipient of a lot of hard work, a lot of belief in creating something that wasn't, what didn't exist just even a decade ago for many of us. So. You know, I, I, I've been an actor for 15 years now, and I often, I'm always struck by the quiet that happens now versus the quiet that happened, you know, 10 years ago. When I didn't get roles 10 years ago, I, I felt like there was nothing, that my career was over and there was nothing that was going to come to me anymore. It was just, it was, uh, it, was it was the end. And now when there's quiet, I have such a belief that the movement will carry me forward, that these women... Um, like Angela, who, who, who's just, who's just, who just laid so much groundwork, will ensure that people like me and people who are coming after me will, will have careers that, that, we, that we thrive in and that we see more people that look like us in, for sure. Yeah. Can I ask you before I take this back to Angela, like you said that at one point you thought your career was over, nothing meaningful was ever going to uh, come your way. At that yeah. point, at that point, would you feel, did you feel invisible? Did you feel overlooked? Did you feel patronized? Uh, what was the attitude? Was there complete invisibilization or was it more like marginalization? No, it was. That's a really great question. And it was never over. It was just that I stopped taking roles that were not meaningful to me anymore, you know. Um, and there was always those roles that the doctors and the nurses and, you know, the, the, the subsidiary of the subsidiary roles available to me. But beca uh, because I came into acting so late, I had a, you know, I just, I, and our careers are so brief. Or, you know what, that was a, that was a, 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 a thought that I held before and, and that's changing. But I just felt like, Unless I was doing work that was meaningful for me, and by meaningful, I mean work where I could show up completely as a complete human being, uh, work there uh, where I could talk about subjects um, that were important to me. You know, my, I, I don't know if you know, but my family is riddled with um, stories of addiction and depression and sexual violence and that's not only my nuclear family it extends it reverberates throughout generations and and how come i'm doing roles that have nothing of that complexity um why am i showing up to do roles where i have to leave my entire self behind uh, when i walk in and that's really the shift of never have i ever one of the biggest things is when i walk through you know, the door of the set, I bring my complete self to set. And that's mm -hmm. such a unique gift. 